for a second. Close the window. All right, this week we're learning about uh, the, 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 the personal message which is in our Torah reading. Uh, that's the whole, that's the purpose of Chabad in general, to make the Torah relevant to us. And of course, the Torah is the will and the wisdom of the creator of the universe. He's creating all the angels and everything like that. So if he wrote a book, he's also creating us. So it's not just the manufacturer's instructions, but it's how to get connected to the manufacturer himself. So when we learn the Torah, it really inside of the Torah is contained life, the source of life, the source of meaning, the source of I say vitality. And that's what it means, happiness. We start off our prayers in the morning. We say, Oz Como. Power and happiness is in the place of God. And where is God? Everywhere. We just have to open ourselves up to the fact that there's a creator and there's a reason for the creation. So what's this week's Torah portion? This week we learn a double Torah portion, and it is called Tazria and Matsora. So here we're going to learn something about Tazria. What, what is Tazria? The word Tazria means... Well, I mean, I'll just I'll just translate what it says in in the word in the, in the Torah. It says Isha ki tazriya v'yolda zachar. It says a woman when she gives seed and she gives birth to a male child, um, she'll be the child will be seven days, and on the eighth day you circumcise him, and that's really where the commandment of circumcision comes. That that Abraham circumcised himself, and that's. Uh, before the giving of the Torah. So he began it. When we, when, we, when we make today a circumcision, the blessing that's made, the, the, we, God commanded us, that you sanctified us with your commandments, right? Before we do a commandment, you make a blessing. So that's the blessing, that you sanctified us with your commandments <coughs> and, and sanctified us with your commandments and commanded us to bring the child into the covenant of Abraham. So it's the covenant of Abraham, but the commandment is from here, from this week's Torah portion. This week's Torah portion. So again, what does it say in the beginning of this week's Torah portion? A woman, when she gives seed and gives birth to a male, he will be seven days. And then the eighth day, you circumcise the, the, the flesh of his foreskin. And it's implied, it doesn't say exactly where this place is, what's the foreskin, what's the flesh, but you mold basar ala, so the flesh of the soul, where is the foreskin and whether this, so it, it explains, the, the Talmud explains it. Without this, you wouldn't know. And maybe it means on his ear, maybe it means who knows what, but it doesn't. Okay, so this, the, the, the circumcision is given on the eighth day. Right? So they say one of the reasons is because medically, that a child after seven days is the eighth day he's healthy. So now you can say, well, it wasn't just God that gave it. It was the, you know, the rabbis, they, and, you know, they, why do you say trial and error? And they're just sort of, you know, who knows how many ch children they killed, first of all. And the, no, God forbid, it's not so. Before the world was created, before the angels were created, before anything was created, the Torah was there. The Torah is the blueprint of the world. Even more, the Torah is united with the essence of God. When we learn the Torah, we're learning something which is above time, above logic. So it could be that really it's true that the earliest time that if a child is circumcised, it is, um, it, 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 there's no danger, or there's less danger. That before that, it's more dangerous. But that is just a side product, an outcome, <clears throat> a byproduct, if you want to say, from the fact that it's God's wisdom. <clears throat> In fact, if it was really God's wisdom, it could be better that you shouldn't circumcise a child at all. I mean, there certainly is a, a certain degree of danger in circumcising a child. You know, certain sense, okay, so if that's the commandment. The child is circumcised on the eighth day. So it comes out the eighth day is not just because of health purposes. It's some godly purpose over here. Somehow or other, God chose the Jew Jewish people and he commanded them with this commandment. Now, this commandment is the only commandment which is called a brit. Covenant. Covenant. In English, it's called circumcision because circumcision is the physical act which is done 
I don't know how it got that name, but I guess because it's cutting around circumcision, cutting around. But the fact of the matter is, is that this strange, I mean, it's a real strange commandment, if you think about it. This commandment which God gives is the covenant between God and the Jewish people. That's when God, <coughs> God gave it to Abraham. And that's when God changed his name, Abraham's name, from Avram to Avraham, Abraham. Before that, his name was Abram. Abram, whatever. And then, how you do it in English, who knows? Abram. And God changed his name. He put a hay in there when he gave him this covenant. What's the covenant? To circumcise himself. Okay, also, now listen. You think that, listen, you want to make a covenant between you and, 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 and somebody you think, make it in a place that's revealed. Huh? Making some of this revealed, or at least it's easily easily revealed. You know, make it on the on the kneecap or somewhere, or somewhere, you know, but it has to be, <clears throat> but make it on the forehead, that would be even better. Make a big mark on a person's forehead. That would be the covenant. But like I say, you know, the kneecaps, you have to roll up his, his, his but why make it in that place? You know, my, that place, I mean, that's the place of nakedness according to almost all humanity. You know, the, the biggest wokers or whatever, they don't walk around without any clothes in the street. I mean, maybe it's going to come to that eventually. At least they, I'm sure they would, wouldn't mind it. But, but the fact of the matter is that is a, that'll be the last place to reveal. Let's put it that way. That's a, 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 a how do you say, even in English, it's called your privates. Huh? Your private. So why make a covenant in that place? Okay, why make it on that place? And why make it on the eighth day? Now, here we're going to talk about more the idea of the eighth day. The eighth day. God made the world in seven days. And the seventh day, it's a six. Actually, God made the world in six days, right? God made the world in six days. And on the seventh day, he did nothing. He rested. <clears throat> okay, now this, of course, makes no sense. The whole business makes no sense. That God created the world. Well, who would... But that makes sense. <laughs> how, do you, how do you create a world? We can't create anything. He created the world from nothing. The world is not made from spirit, and the world is not made from, from how do you say, quarks or energy or whatever. The world is made from nothing. Well, we have no idea what that means, nothing. But the closest we can come to it is like an absolute vacuum. A vacuum is space. There's something, there's space. But the world is created, was created, from, and it is created from nothing right now. Everything is being created from nothing. We have no idea how it's done. But okay, let's let's leave that for one second and just say God created the world. Part of the creation of the world is time. Time is one of the creations. There's, an, uh, there's different opinions about that, but time is one of the is one of the creations that God created. So it unfolded time. There's a book called Sefer Yetzirah, and it talks about what the source, how time is in the upper worlds. And so there's seven days of creation, right? Seven days of creation? No, there's six days of creation. Six days of creation and one day of creator. Shabbos is the creator day. A non-Jew is not supposed to observe Shabbat. And even on another day of the week, a non-Jew is not supposed to make a Shabbat for himself. Shabbat was only given to the Jews. And why? Because Shabbat is holy. And the job of the Jews is to make the world holy. The job of the non-Jews is to make this world a blessed place. Uh, a, a productive place, a good place, a positive place, an orderly place, a peaceful place, <clears throat> right, a happy place. But the job of the Jews is to make this world a holy place. And that can only be accomplished through Shabbat. Shabbat is called holy. Shabbat is the day when we're supposed to realize that the whole business is just a big creation and that the whole entire world is, is being created constantly by the creator. The world is really a gift. Everything in the gift world is a gift. Everything in the world is a miracle. Everything in the world is a surprise. Huh? To appreciate this is, is, a, is a very positive, a, how do you say, a, a very positive, um, a, there's a good word I want to use and I can't think what the word is. Anyway, it's a positive attitude. And that's not the word I want, but if you look at everything in the world and you say, wow, this is made by God, it's being made by God every instant, every single second, right? Of course, not to overdo it because we have, you know, our jobs we have to do in the world. Everybody has this purpose. But the fact is 
is that the world is a beautiful place. Huh? The, 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 the other song, I say to myself, what a beautiful world. The fact is, it is a beautiful world. The world, it is a beautiful world. Sometimes you look at the people, it's pretty ugly. But if you look at the world, it's a beautiful world. So that's one thing, to appreciate. <clears throat> we can appreciate the world, but the appreciating is, that's just, if you want to say, one third of the picture. The other, thir other one another third is we have to work, we have to do things. That's the six days of the week. The six days of the week, we do things. <clears throat> we accomplish things. We make things. And Shabbat, so to speak, is the other two thirds. I mean, let's say the two thirds. Number one, to appreciate. And number two is to change our attitude toward everything in accordance with these first two appreciation of God and our <clears throat> responsibility to God. Oh. Huh? We've got a responsibility to God to make the world a better place. We are responsibility. We're responsible. Oh. Responsible to make the better. In order to do that, you have to have, <clears throat> you have to sort of readjust yourself because the world can suck you in. The world can get you very negative. Okay, so that's okay. That's the number seven. Seven is holy. What's the number eight? Eight is even higher than holy. What's that mean? Huh? What does it mean? Let's see. Lam not say Okay, so what does that mean? One second, let me make this bigger. Oh. There we go. Lam not say Lam not say This is one <coughs> the Psalms of King David. Lam not This is this is a psalm of King David, Psalm number 12. It says it's a psalm about the circumcision. King David actually made a psalm about the circumcision. Why? Shinit number is first of all the 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 the, 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 the circumcision, the covenant between us and God <coughs> was given on the eighth day. On the eighth day, why make a psalm about circumcision? That's sort of strange, isn't it? it says there's a story. It says that he was. It says in, in the Talmud, Sheba Mirchatz, he was in the uh, the the bathhouse. Went to the mikvah. Raw at that small, he saw himself. He's naked. All right, now, when you're in a bathhouse, the, the law is there's certain places where you're not allowed to do commandments or say words of Torah. Or do anything holy. And one is like in a toilet, you're not supposed to. And also in a bathhouse because you're naked. This is for men because you're naked. So day, King David, his whole life was just Torah and commandments. So he saw himself and all of a sudden he saw himself that he was naked without any commandments. He couldn't do any commandments. He couldn't think words of Torah. <clears throat> so he felt very bad. He felt, you know, naked spiritually. Kevin Shaniskar Bamila, as soon as he remembered his circumcision, Nisyashva Dato, his he became calm. Like it says in the Talmud in Menachot. The Talmud in Menachot, that's the name of the Talmud. Menachot, that's the bread offerings, all the laws of the bread offerings. Page Mem Gimel, page 43. <clears throat> so here we have the great King David, warrior, genius, psalmist, and he was comforted by the fact that he was circumcised. <clears throat> the Kainu, it's also the same thing in the, in the Talmud Yerushalmi, Sof Mesechah's Brachas, in the end of Mesechah's Brachas. With Tzorak Lab, we have to understand, Lama Yata Ashira, Ashir Noten B'Shemini Davka, why make the song, what does it say? Lam Natsayach Al Ashminit, on the, right? Al Ashminit, on the eighth. Why does it say? Lam Natsayach Al Amila, or Lam Natsayach Al Abrit. Why is he say that this is a song for the number eight? And we have to learn that what he really meant was the circumcision that was on the eighth. He was happy about the circumcision. He wasn't happy about the fact that it was the eighth day. Why does it say this is a song for the eighth? On the tzach, mizmor al-shmirit. 
What's so special about this, the eighth? Okay, Ahine, Katib, it is written, Biyom Shmini, it says, this week's Torah portion, and the eighth day, Yemol Basar Laso, it says on the eighth day, it will be circumcised, but I feel it Shabbat, even in Shabbat. Shemila Doche Shabbat. On Shabbat, it is forbidden to, um, to spill blood. It's forbidden to wound someone on Shabbat or anything on Shabbat. But it's forbidden to make a wound on Shabbat. If the person is in a life-threatening situation, then you can. But if not, then not. It says even you have to even if you decide to brush your teeth on Shabbat. So one of the reasons for not doing it is you have to be very careful you don't draw blood because it's not it's forbidden to draw blood on Shabbat. How can you make circumcision? Circumcision is a lot of blood. <clears throat> so it's because circumcision pushes away Shabbat. Circumcision must be on the eighth day. If a child is born on Shabbat, then the circumcision comes out the next Shabbat. And you circumcise the child. Well, having to understand why is it that the circumcision is higher than Shabbat? That is in the eighth day, how can it be that the circumcision pushes away the holiness of Shabbat? Somehow or other, as holy as Shabbat is, <clears throat> Circumcision is higher. Well, how can that be after this beautiful explanation? Or I, Anyway, I thought it was beautiful. But this explanation I just gave about how Shabbat, and it's the Creator's Day, and the Jewish people remember the Creator, and we change our attitude. That's pretty good. I mean, you can't get this holiness that's unique to the Jewish people, the Shabbat. And now we're saying there's something even more unique, the circumcision. To the point that circumcision even pushes away. How can it be? What does it mean higher? It's more godly. What does it mean? Shorsha Devorin, this is more Jewish. Shorsha Devorin, the source is Kihine, Ekalam Alachos, all the, the works should be a motachol. Everything we do in the weekdays, Lamatet Malachot, it's called, in general, there's four, 39 categories categories of work of Chorish Vakatsir, of Zore, I'm sorry. Of, uh, of of plowing and planting. Heimbechin is tikkun. These are fixing up ubiro lahalot mekoach atzomeach to raise things up from the take out the power of growth which is in the earth. Okay, how do we know what's forbidden on Shabbat? It says in the in the Ten Commandments, you're not supposed to do work on Shabbat. Now, what does that mean? You're not supposed to do any work on Shabbat. I mean, nowadays, like say, to turn on a light in your house, you don't have to do any work. Light a match. That's work. You don't have to light a, you know, light a match. No work. It's like, nothing, no problem. Right? I mean, it's a lot easier to light a match than it is, let's say, to lift up your fork huh? or take the, the dishes back to the kitchen after you finish eating. Maybe you can't do that either. Maybe everything is work. You can't just have to sit there like a mummy on Shabbat, right? And have be fed. You can't pick up, pick up your fork to your mouth. Who knows? What is work? You can't do work. So <clears throat> the, the, the answer is, is that immediately after the, the, the commandment of Shabbat, it talks about building the temple, building the tabernacle in the desert. So from this, we learned that on Shabbat, they did not build a tabernacle. As important as the tabernacle was, you know, the portable holy temple they had in the desert, so as important as that was, and as essential it is, is to Judaism, that that's the place where God's presence was revealed. Uh, that's the place where you really served God. Mashiach comes, he's going to build a third temple. And then because of that, it's going to draw all the Jews to Israel because all the Jews will want to do all the commandments. And in the temple is the only place you can do all the commandments. So there's nothing important, more important than building the, the temple, right? So it's not exactly right. On Shabbat, they didn't build a temple. So the rabbis understood that God is giving us a message over here. And God wanted them to understand this. That's why he gave it not clear that there's 39 general categories of work which were necessary to build a tabernacle. And all of these 39 are forbidden. You can't do anything to, <clears throat> how do you say, speed up or promote the building of the tabernacle. And generally, these are 39 types of work, and they explain what exactly they are, how they are relevant in the temple, right? You're not allowed to write because they used to write numbers on the, on the boards. 
not to crush because they crushed up the the the, the what was the colors <coughs> the colors that we used to make the tabernacle etc so there's also you're not allowed to plow or to plant because they had the bread that they made in the temple. You're not allowed to slaughter like I just finished it. You can't draw blood because that's what they used to. <coughs> that was used for the skins that were on top of them. <coughs> they had to slaughter animals for the skins that were on top of. Them. So all these things that you can't do on Shabbat, you should do in the weekdays. Why? Because all of these thirty-nine types of work which were used to. <coughs> To, uh, to, to in building the, the tabernacle, these twenty, these are basically things which are used to fix up not just the tabernacle but the whole world, planting, plowing, plowing, planting, harvesting, winnowing. But all these things are used to take the world and use it properly, and that's the job of the Jewish people. The job of the Jewish people is to make this physical world a holy place. We're not interested in going to heaven. You do go to heaven. There is heaven, there is hell. That's God's business, totally God's business. Our job is to fix up the world. This is the 39 categories of work called 39 malachot, the 39 works. These are fixing up and refining the world to elevate the power of growth, which is in the earth, that it can make it grow. And then by means of this, things, right, by plowing, so it <clears throat> grows the transforms the power of the earth to <clears throat> the vegetable, the wheat, and the vegetable then transforms to man. And man, people live. <inaudible> because a person, when he eats, when we eat, how do we elevate the food? First of all, we make a blessing on the food in the beginning and in the end, after we finish eating. And by means of this blessing, we draw holiness into the food. And afterwards, when we receive life from the food, right? The, the food energizes us. So then <clears throat> we, the, 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 the energy, which is in the food, which makes the person alive, <clears throat> this strengthens us and it strengthens our body and our mind. <clears throat> With this power, physical power and, and, and emotional power, intellectual power that you have when you eat, then you can pray and you can learn and you can do the commandments. Lokach, therefore, all the, all the energy of the food elevates with him, elevates with the, this person's work, and is included in Echad Va'ava, in the oneness of God, when we say, and loving God. Okay, this is a pretty far stretch here, what we're talking about. What we're talking about. But it, it takes a lot of faith to believe in this, because at face value, we have a world, and that's it. You got a world and you're in the world and you live and you die. And I say, eat, drink, and be merry. Tomorrow you die. You know, you just do whatever you want, basically, in this world. That's on face value. But if you look a little bit deeper, you'll see that it's it's maybe, maybe it's not so. Right? Maybe it's not so. I think any intellectual person can see that maybe it's not so. At least you'll have a choice. Maybe it's not so. Maybe there's a purpose to the world. Maybe there's a reason why the world is here. So then you can jump in all the religions and they say, yeah, the reason is, is you're going to go to heaven. So yeah, that, that could be also. That's that's also, a, a, how do you say, an option? That's an option. But then Judaism comes and says, no, that's not it. <clears throat> the purpose of the world is so that here and only here can we do what God wants and we can do it the way that God wants. <clears throat> and by means of that, we show the true potential which is in the world, just like plowing. And planting takes out the potential, which is in the ground, <clears throat> the physical potential, as the Jews bring out the spiritual potential, the, the true meaning, which is in everything. And so it is with all of this, the works that we do on the seven days of the week, like baking and cooking. All these are fixing up food <coughs> so that people can eat. Okay, that's the category of eating. Then we also have other things, what about clothes? It's forbidden to weave on Shabbat. And similar, this is fixing that the people should have clothes. You take physical things like animals, wool or whatever it is, or flax, right? And you, 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 you weave it and you elevate it so that people can use it to have food. What about building? You build, you can make a house. <clears throat> so you make the place, the world dwellable. 
right? This is relevant to everybody, but a Jew can use these things for holiness. He can use all of these things for holiness. He makes a blessing on them. He can dress modestly. <clears throat> the being dressed properly allows you to go places where you can do, you know, the, the, the commandments, you can do all these things. He derechlal generally all the food, kula and mizonos, velavushim and garments. I'm, I'm sorry, there are all, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. Malachot, not ma'achalot, malachot, all of the works, these 39, they are generally food, garments, and house, right? And these are also hechalot, these are also in the upper worlds, there's also corresponding to this food and garments, even by the angels. It says that the angels, they're fed by the blessings that we make. In any case, all of this refrain that we do in the world, so here we have a little bit of a Kabbalistic explanation. This comes from the 200 Rapach Nitsutsos, the 288 sparks that fell in the breaking of the vessels into Bria Yitzir and Asiya. Uh, that's pretty impressive. Now let me explain what he's talking about over here. <clears throat> when God created the world, he wanted there to be a world. He wanted there to be a world, and he wanted there to be in the world <clears throat> a choice to do good and to do bad. So he created the option to do bad. That is translated sometimes as being the devil. Right? It's an urge to do selfish things, to do the devil. The serpent, the, the, the angel of death, the evil impulse, whatever. These, it's, it's there as an option. God did not want people to actually do it. But he wanted there to be the option there that you could do it if you wanted to. Huh? <clears throat> like, okay, so like, like you just take an example. If you made everybody in the world stupid, then there wouldn't be any like big time wars. There couldn't be any like Nazis and things like that. They made all these sophisticated weapons and attacked everybody with these you know weird bombs and planes and stuff like that. Everybody would just be fighting with clubs and then eh, a couple of people would get killed, you know. <clears throat> and so... But no, God made people intelligent. Why? So they should understand that they shouldn't go and kill each other. On the other hand, you can understand I got better ways to kill each other. Everything there is in the world can go one way or the other. That's the idea of the world. <clears throat> but the enter the life force, which is in the world, which is in the world, as that life force can be divided up and says into 288 sparks. 288, if you want to call it units of meaning, that can be used for good or for not good. Where do we get this number from? It's not important over here, but nevertheless, when God made the world, he wanted there to be such an option in the world, these sparks falling down into bad, and that was called breaking of the vessels. In the beginning, God made the world, everything was beautiful. We're talking about the upper worlds, the upper worlds high above this, above the world of Atsilus, whatever. <clears throat> and then God purposely made that these upper worlds would break so to speak, and that there would be a descent, a tremendous descent into the world of Bria, Yesir, and Asiya. It's like a person being born, right? A person gets born into the world, he's got problems. Before you're born, your soul is okay, you've got no problems, no peer pressure, no anything. And then you get born, all of a sudden, there's all these temptations and, and rejections and, 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 and aggressions and depressions and things like that. That's called the breaking of the vessels. That's the whole world is like a big <clears throat> sort of a body, and the soul of the body is like these 288 sparks. The film. We have to elevate the whole business. We have to elevate them from the, the world's Bria, Yetzir, and Asiya. Asiya is this physical world for our purposes. Yetzir is the world of the angels. Bria is the world of, of souls. But these are still worlds of creation, and you have to elevate them to Atsilut. Atsilut is the highest of the four dimensions of reality. Atzilut, that's above the angels, above the souls. Atzilut, this is the world of Tikkun. This is the first world which is totally fixed up. Shekavar Nittak and everything was fixed up by means of Adam, by means of people. But a Tikkun shall Adam, who bebriya tzir of Asiya. I'm sorry, this was already fixed up, not by means of man. Atzilut is pure holiness. When we talk about holiness, we mean Atzilut. Atzilut is like Shabbos day. <clears throat> we want to fix up the world. We have to fix up the world. The takana, we have to fix it up by means of working. That's what a person does all the weekdays. 
is fixing up the world, using the world properly, dealing with the difficulties of the world, the challenges of the world, the disappointments of the world, the successes of the world. Sometimes success can even be a bigger a pitfall than, um, than failure. Uh, a failure, at least you call out to God. When you're successful, you think you're God. <clears throat> and that's what a person has to do the whole week. Now, this is talking about, we're talking about now Jewish faith as explained by Hasidut. We are here to fix up the world. We are here to make the world a holy place. And that is done by means of using the world, utilizing the world <clears throat> in the proper way, with the proper attitude, according to God's instructions, according to God's directions, according to God's will. That's the weekdays. We take the mundane, and we connect it back to the source. Like we said, like putting the puzzle together. And you have a big puzzle, it means meaningless, and you put the whole thing together. That's the weekday. You do with food what God wants. You do with the earth what God wants. You do with your car what God wants. You do with clothes what God wants. That's called elevating. <laughs> <clears throat> That's the weekdays. Although the Shabbos, but on Shabbos, ain bo birur. On Shabbos, you don't do work. But take on kolal, rach, achila. All you do is you eat. On Shabbat, you can. How do you? The only dealing you really have with the world is the food that you eat. And even the food that you eat, <clears throat> right? The food that you eat is in a different way. The food that you eat is milamayl lamata from above to below. In other words, the blessings come automatically. Shabbos. Tzadik ochel lisvo nafsho. A tzadik eats to satisfy his soul, not his body. Listen, I mean, yeah, you can overeat on Shabbos too. That's possible to do. There's a famous, a well-known story, <clears throat> excuse me, about the Baal Shem Tov, that once he was sitting with his pupils on Shabbat, and he said, I want to show you something. He took all his pupils out in the street. They walked down the street, and they looked in the window. He said, look in that window of a person. There was sitting a... It says a tzaddik. It says a tzaddik echad. <clears throat> he was sitting with his family, and he was eating, and he had a big strangle. You know, the fur hat they had looked, you know, beautiful. A Jewish look, radiant face. And they looked in front of him. They said, look at his face. They looked at his face. And suddenly, before their very eyes, his face turned into the face of an ox. And the pupils were just shocked to the essence of the soul. They never saw something like that. <clears throat> and the Baal Shem Tov said he's got so involved in eating the meat that the meat ate him. In other words, he trans instead of transforming the ox into human, which that's what you're supposed to do, instead of that, the ox transformed him into ox. And that was on Shabbat. It says on Shabbat. So it's possible for a person, don't think you're you're totally protected on Shabbat, but nevertheless, that's in general, you have a tremendous <clears throat> Shabbat is what's called God's day, and the things that you use in the world are much easier to elevate on Shabbat because God, so to speak, gives the blessing from above to below. And that's the three minutes of three meals of Shabbat, three times in the day, like it says three times, Bayom HaShvi'i, it says three times, Talat Zimnin, three times, Natif Taladatika, there's three times where the drips down, do, do, D-E-W, from this level of Atika. Atika is the inner level, what's called of God's crown. A tremendously high spiritual level. But that's this level of pleasure, upper pleasure of Shabbat. The Yechala Lokim B'Yom Shavi. That's what's going on in Shabbat. If you're not aware of it, <clears throat> it's like having a million dollars in your bank account and you're not, nobody told you about it, right? And you think you're poor, you're going eating in the garbage cans. But the fact of the matter is, is on Shabbat, every Jew has this amazing gift which is given to him. That's what it says, says that God finished everything he did on the seventh day, but the word for finishing is the same word for <clears throat> what do you call expiration, expite, not expi it's a bad word. Uh, how do you say? Fulfilling a great longing. Fulfilling. That your soul sort of goes out of yourself because of your pleasure. <laughs> they draw down this upper pleasure. Huh? <clears throat> draw down this upper pleasure. <clears throat> it's like if you, 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 you build a house and you work on building a house and when you finish building the house, oh, you get pleasure. That's what I wanted. This is exactly what I want. But who, this is what's called, another Kabbalistic term, this is what's called 
mad mayan duchrin masculine waters shemivorer which are refined from which with i am sorry which they refine feminine waters what's masculine waters what's feminine waters <clears throat> water in general is uh, a life a pleasure energy feminine waters is the energy that we elevate from below to above a person prays he thinks about god he's elevating his thoughts from <clears throat> from himself to the creator to the creator it's the opposite of selfishness selfishness is you want to receive everything you want to receive everything and <clears throat> you know you want to give if you receive something but you want to, Mayan nukvin, feminine waters, means you, you want to give to the creator. You're thinking about the creator. L great longing for the creator. Huh? Like parents that are longing for their son that went away to the army or, you know, the, the love songs. A man longs for this woman or women longs for, for her husband. A man longs for his wife. They've been separated. They're longing. <clears throat> Such a great longing they have. That's, lo that's Mayan dukhrim, water that goes from below to above. We're longing for the creator. God is so good, he's creating us, he loves us, and we just want to return that love, we just feel that we want, to, that's called feminine waters, and then Mayan Dukhrin, that's what's called God, masculine waters, God is called male because it's from above to below, right, like we said, Mother Earth receives, that the Mayan Dukhrin, that's from God, from, so God reacts, Shakala Allah, that every time, that all of the energy that we elevated in the weekdays, this is what's called feminine waters. And on Shabbat is drawn down these masculine waters, Mayan Dukhrin. This is Aramaic. Dukhrin is Zachar. Right? <clears throat> this is into a tzilut, ba'olam atikun in the fixed up world. And this is the level of Ma. Remember we learned about Ma? Ma is, is one of the names of God, it says. It's one of the numerical values of how you fill up the name of God. The name of God is the numerical value of 26. Yud and then hey and then vav and then hey and if you fill up the letters yud, fill it phonetically so it comes out to a bigger number than twenty six, and depending on how you fill up these four letters, it can come out. <clears throat> one of the ways can come out to be ma forty five. So <clears throat> nevertheless, it's also an aspect of godliness. This is an aspect of God that comes from above to below, blessings which come from above to below. That's this thing of ma, because elevation of this feminine water, in other words, what we do which this comes from the level of ban, that's another name of God, which is 52, another way of filling up. And tikkun, this is mad shenimshach, this comes down by means of elevating the feminine waters, namely our energy going up to God, which that comes from the aspect of God, and which is called ban, that's the aspect of God, so to speak, which is the physicality of the world. Then it evokes this level of God's, that's a good word. It evokes this level of blessing of God, which is called masculine waters, which comes from this name of God, which is 45. Okay. Hamavora, and this refines this level of ban. And this is an arousal from above after the arousal from below. Misha Torah of Shabbos. Okay, that was a little bit complicated, but the point of the matter is what the Rebbe wants to say is there's a, <clears throat> just like human anatomy, right? human anatomy. If you look at, you know, in, 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 in medical school, so they make operations on cadavers. So a cadaver, if you look at a cadaver, you sort of would never, let's say if you only knew about cadavers, you never, you would never really dream that all these things work. You know, the heart pumps and, the, you know, you have a heart that pumps. So, but if you just showed somebody from brand new, you know, what is this? Let's say you put a, a, a plastic, right? I think now they have, now there's a plastic, must have. Anyway, you have a plastic one on the other. Oh, it isn't These little things don't have to work. It's just interesting. You know, that's just how it goes. Who would dream that this works? The life, the dynamics of the life force, how the heart pumps, how the lungs pump, how the this and that, that's a dynamic process. The same thing is with the world. You look at the world, right? Like Darwin and those people, it's just a dead thing. It's just dead. The world is dead. It came from, from what was it? From atoms, from who knows what from uh, <clears throat> from uh, the organic atoms, organic chemistry. You look, anyway, but the whole thing is just this big sort of, you know, meaningless process. <clears throat> That's one way of looking at it. You can look at it like that. But the fact is, it's not so. It's a dynamic living process. The whole entire world is. And this is the process between us 
the creation and the creator. And what we do, this starts a circulation, just like blood circulates, right? It starts a circulation. The circulation, and, and it begins, God, of course, begins everything. He creates us. He gives us inspiration. But then by means of that, when we <clears throat> elevate and we give thanks or uh, recognition to the creator, and we use the world in that way, that's called feminine waters. And that evokes what's called masculine waters. And the feminine waters, that's connected with one name of God, which is called Ban 52. And the masculine waters, that's connected to God in a way that's called 48. Okay. <clears throat> And the that, but that that's on the on that's on. <clears throat> so the weekdays, that's more the thing of what we do. And Shabbat is this masculine water. That's the thing what God does. <clears throat> okay. Um, but when you keep Shabbat, that's what it's like. It's Shabbat, like a person that rests from his work, work that he was working at very very hard. For instance, a person is writing a book and his mind is all busy thinking about this. What should I write next? And he wants to fix it up and etc. Then his mind is in the deed. That's like us in the six days of the week. But when he finishes the book, his mind goes back to its source. What does it mean? He looks at the book. <clears throat> ah, this is good, right? Let's say a painting maybe is better. A house. He finishes. Ah, this is good. Right, I finished. That's what's called elevation. Elevation. God created the world. He sunk, so to speak, his energy into creating the world. And Shabbat, everything goes back up to its source. Up to its source. And that goes up to its source. But God gets pleasure. The main thing of, of Shabbat is God's pleasure. The idea of it going up, that's like in the night of Shabbos. The nighttime of Shabbos. And God's pleasure, that's like in the daytime of Shabbos. Look, and therefore, there's no work on Shabbat because all the work has already been done in the six days of the week. All there is on Shabbat, Elohu, I'm Shachat Mad, is just drawing down this level of masculine water, Mayan Dukrin from Atzilut, in the world of Tikkun. And all of this, that's the thing of Shabbat. That's Shabbat. Good? That's Shabbat. Just a little bit more, a little bit more. One minute. Oh, that's Shabbat. But what about the circumcision? Hmm? That's what we're talking about here. Is the circumcision. This whole mind was about the circumcision. What happened? Why doesn't it change? Pages. Ah, there it goes. There it goes. A little bit of patience, which is what I have a little bit. Here we go. Oh. Eh. One minute. One minute. What happened? <clears throat> ah, of all, I skipped too soon. Of all, Mila, but the circumcision, he madrega hagvom. Oh, this is even higher, much higher than even the world of Atzilut, which that's where Shabbat goes. <clears throat> and this is what we're going to talk about, God willing, tomorrow. <clears throat> now let's learn the Tavar Malchut. Okay, the Varma Hood. Stay tuned in. What's going on over there?